by competition because I can walk in behind him by his own and he can't touch me. And November 8th, I was getting ready to start marketing my product and I went back to check again and all of a sudden his website was advertising Biozone. I'm like, no, 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 this can't be, I've got a regional, I've got a 10 mile protected area. You're protected. I've got a 10 mile protected territory. He said, if somebody comes in, they'll be under you, they'll work under you, you'll control the, the business and up to 25 miles away from you, we'll encourage them to work with you, that you'll control the contracts in the business. And here's this company advertising Biozone. I'm like, no, I mean, this is a big company. They've got trucks and crews and electrostatic sprayers. I'm like, I can't compete with these guys. So Abraham, you called up Mark Tipton. I called him and I was angry. I said, Mark, what is up? This guy, he goes, and his response was, well, I can't control the competition. And they joined NOAI and they're marketing Biozone. I said, but I'm a regional. He said, well, there's no such thing as what you're doing. I said, so wait a minute. I, I wrote a really, really nasty email. I said, so I could have paid $200 to join an OIA and had full access to Biozone, like you said I had as a regional, and not spent my $5,000 on your machines that aren't worth anything. He said, well, you've got the training and the, the training materials on the website and everything. I'm like, oh my God, this guy spent 200 bucks and now he's my competition when I was in protected territory. It, it, when we talk about Biozone, folks, this is a concept I created four, uh, four plus years ago um, called Get Sanitized. And it's uh, something that I shared with Mark. It's, it's one of my, in my opinion, one of my best uh, business systems that I've developed. And um, it is a system where you come in and you do a routine sho ozone shock treatments. And then you come behind and using a, an expensive electrostatic fogger, which gives wraparound um, control of application, and I can spray this pole from one side and coat all three dimensions through static cling, um, we would apply a uh, nanocatalyst. And that nanocatalyst that I selected, unlike Biozone, is space age technology it works um, using the power of oxygen which is the power behind ozone gas and the way that it works is you spray it onto the interior surface of a car or into a nursing home or a daycare facility or a hospital or any of the many places where you have high turnover uh, lots of people in contact with one another and germs get spread and what happens is when light the lights are turned on in the morning or when the sunlight comes through the windows it reacts with the catalyst, creating a small electrical charge, which actually splits the water molecule apart in the air, creating hydroxyls and free radical oxygen long after the machines are gone. And so this gives a, the customer a, a comfortable feeling knowing that that system is not just a once and done and after the ozone machine's turned off, it's over, that it keeps on working over and over and over in between the monthly or bi-monthly or quarterly or annual or biannual applications, whatever you're able to sell them as a, a contractor. And uh, so Mark basically uh, copied that and he market created this name Biozone. Now Biozone is another company's uh, trademark and name uh, for a completely different product, so I don't want to get you folks that are out there in internet land confused. Um, we're talking not about the Biozylane uh, nano coating. And folks, uh, this is nothing new. As a matter of fact, Dow Chemical invented the technology of the organosilanes in 1975. This is a 40-year-old technology. The sales literature claims that it puts down a layer of nano spikes on the surfaces and that when viruses and germs land on it, they get impaled and they're thus providing a mechanical uh, deactivation mechanism so it's completely safe, it's non-chemical, it's non-toxic. You know, aesthetically attractive. He's told you what spray it on a kid's toy and you know Take it, spray let him lick it or whatever. And now you and I had done a little bit of research. I did the research and rejected this because it is a very toxic product. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about what you found when you started researching? Well, my research is based on the fact that I wanted to know more claims. 99.9% .9 of all germs are killed. Well, I found a company that provided me documentation on their product with a log chart that shows what that means. And I asked Mark for documentation on what Biozone can do, because he's also making a hand sanitizer and says it'll kill germs for up to 12 hours. And I said, well, I need documentation. He sent, there's a thing on his website, it's a nursing home in Central Florida. They sprayed it on in a six-month study and up to 99% was killed. And that's just all the documentation they ever provided. 
I said, I want some scientific evidence this stuff works because my clients want that. And he's like, well, don't tell them 12 hours, just tell them a couple, well, extended formula, a couple of hours. I said, that just makes it like everything else on the market. So I got really disenchanted and started looking around, and that's when I started talking to you about your product because one company is coming into town, they're out of Australia called BioProtect, and they've got the, 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 the chemical test to prove this. And I, last month I bought a case of Mark's BioZone hand sanitizer as a door opener, and on the label it now says, now including BioProtect. Well, that's the patented trade name of the product in uh, Australia. So I contacted them and they're looking into it because they think it might be a trademark infringement. Because, and I asked Mark, what is BioProtect? We won't return a phone call or email. It's been two months and a half now. So, what did you find out about how you have to really apply the BioZone protectant, and how did Mark tell you it could be applied? His, his his install manual says paper mask. I emailed him about a month ago to confirm that because I read somewhere that the chemicals. I mean, this stuff is forming a chemical bond to surfaces. So if I'm breathing it, it's going to form a chemical bond to me. And what I found is it requires a mask with a respirator on it and goggles and should be in the area of nobody in it. Mark Manuel says you can go into a business at lunchtime and just fog it out and 20 minutes later they can come back in from lunch and all the better. I'm like, okay. I'm afraid to use it. I'm, I'm scared to death of using it. When you read the MSDS, it actually says call 911 for yeah, inhalation. There's a, whole, there's a whole thing on uh, MSDS. In uh, all, some of the other, other organosilines, MSDSs we found uh, say that if you're using it in a confined space, which means indoors, like you should wear a self-contained breathing apparatus. That's a SCABA, which is what the firemen wear when they go into an oxygen-deprived environment, providing you with your own self-contained air supply. Because that the fumes of that stuff are so poisonous, they can harm your lungs so badly you have to call 911. Yet he's telling his customers to wear a paper mask. A paper mask. Dollar mask about him eight pounds, all you need. Nothing else required. Have you fogged any of that stuff? No, I refuse to do it. If I can get a scab, I will. Yeah. So you can plug the rose oxygen. You know, if I apply it, I'm going to be playing with a spray bottle on the rag and inside cars, I'm not going to fog it. I was just curious. So, so you did a little bit more research into the headquarters of the BioZone Protective. Yeah, you know, it's when I started getting, if I can say, more worried because the people who make BioZone Protective are in Jupiter, Florida, and I found at least two MSDS sheets from different companies with the same exact address, the same exact product, with different names. And what is that address? What's that? What's it look like? Oh, when you Google it, it's a duplex, a little dumpy duplex sitting down in Miami, Florida somewhere. So it's a residential property, it's not a, a commercial yeah, property. It's a residential property. And that address is good for at least three other companies. Uh, I think I, I, I found all different companies that Mark runs that are headquartered out of that corporate headquarters. So you found that Mark Tipton has five or six or seven or eight different entities. The company that sells the ozone machines, the company, educational company that provides the training, the uh, NOAI and BioZone, they're all, it's like a, a long con is what I call it. He's got his finger literally making you think that, that he's just farming this stuff out and joining together. But it's all just funneling the money into one place. And you know, it, I think Jim McDonald is the guy that uh, filed the paper, paperwork for uh, BioZone. Yes. And <coughs> I, in researching my emails, I found out that Jim McDonald was uh, a partner of Mark Tipton's or a relative of Mark Tipton's in some way, shape, or form. Was, I found an email going back between he and I from a few years ago that I talked about uh, Jim McDonald. And then you pointed out in one of the emails that Mark uh, talked about about how Jim McDonald and he f found this biozone. Yeah, he said they're going to Florida to talk to the biozone manufacturer. And I'm like, that means they're going to have a conversation with themselves because they have the corporate name biozone in Miami. And he made you think he was going to go talk to some big corporation when in fact he was going to go meet with Jim and take a vacation. Right. There was nothing else to it. They were already selling the product under that name. When I asked why it was taking so long to ship, he said, well, things are backed up. And they're backed up in your little duplex. It's, it's a one, it looks like a one-bedroom duplex. It's, it's a junky little place. And that's the corporate I think they're bottling it themselves, <clears throat> which is why the hand sanitizer takes so long. It took me like three weeks to get a case of hand sanitizer. And I've been asking for six months for a label 
and he will provide you with a label or the PDF a label because I was going to do that little sample bottles and he said well we can't sell sample bottles because it's a foaming product and they don't make a small foamer. In five minutes I bought a case of small foamer bottles for like 20 bucks and he said again so I, I'm confident that they're repackaging this stuff maybe without permission and he doesn't want to take the chance of selling small sample bottles or small two ounce bottles like the other companies do. It's got me very disheartened now until like so let's talk about, you know, support. The reason you really fell for what you call the long con, not an idea.